Mr. T. Uh, we have a, another application of definite integrals uh, in this tutorial. We're going to be talking about marginal analysis. Earlier in the year when we were covering a differential calculus, we worked a number of business applications where we had a function for cost and revenue and created profit functions. And one of the things we did to analyze those functions was to take their derivative and create marginal cost revenue profit functions. And derivatives give us rate of change, so we were able to look at for values of x whether the function was increasing or decreasing, and we could estimate what the effect would be on, say, profit if we sold one more units by looking at the differentials. In the integral applications, we happen to know the marginal function, the rate of change of our profit, cost, or revenue, but we don't know the specific or the exact formula for our cost, revenue, or profit models. And we want to be able to calculate, if we change our production rate or our sales rate, what will effect will that have on the particular business function and we can do that by using definite integrals. In our particular problem here we have a marginal profit function that's given here for some product and we've maybe been selling at 125 units and we want to understand if we're able to increase our sales to 150 units if this is our marginal profit function uh, how much would our profit change? Would it increase or decrease and by how much? Again, using integration, we can get that exact number, assuming that this marginal function accurately models our product. Uh, so let's look at this. So if we want to answer our question here, we want to evaluate the definite integral from 125 to 150 of our marginal profit function. Again, that is giving us change in profit is going to uh, be what we calculate. Again, I'm going to use the graphing calculator to do this uh, in definite integral. Uh, we, this one's an easy one. Using power rule and constant rule, we could easily do it by hand, but let's just take advantage of the calculator here to keep the tutorial a little short. I've already entered my... Uh, function here, my marginal function, into y1. And to use the definite integral on the TI-83 and TI-84 series, your window has to include this range of x values. They have to be visible when we graph the function, otherwise you'll get an error when you try to integrate. Uh, we don't necessarily have to see the y values, but I've chosen a window here where we'll be able to see the profit values and again our key part of doing this is our uh, x max had to go up to at least 150. So if we sketch the graph here, we get this. Uh, now to integrate, remember we do second and we get the calculation menu which is on top of trace and we're doing item 7 here. And we need to input our lower bound which was 125 and our upper limit which is 150 and we get one thousand five hundred and ten dollars so this is a change in profit of one thousand five hundred and ten dollars and sixty three cents now this is not the total profit of making hundred and fifty units this is an increase in profit of $1,510 over top of whatever profit we had at $125. But we don't know the profit we were making on that 125 units. And given that it is positive, our profit's increasing, so it's probably a good thing if we can find a way to increase our sales to do that. Thank you. Hello, Mr. T here with uh, an application on definite integrals. In an earlier tutorial titled Area Under a Curve, we introduced, or I introduced, the 
concept of an area under a curve using and finding that area using something called definite integrals and we introduced the fundamental theorem of calculus. Today we're going to talk about using the definite integrals for another application which is to find the average value of a function. We'll get into the problem I have here in a second but before we do that let's just review what we mean by average value. So we all know from uh, basic math that if we are if we have a list of discrete items, maybe they are scores on a test, we can find the average by summing up all of the items and dividing by the number of items. But when we're dealing with functions, let's just sketch a function to work with. Just pick some arbitrary function here. And let's say we wanted to find the average value of that function from this value of x, a, to this value of x, b. We want to know in this interval, that continuous interval, what's the value of f of x. Now we can't just add up the f of x's because there are a infinite number of them and we would be then dividing by an infinite number so we have a indeterminate number and we have to resolve that. Let's think about briefly if we took the integral of f of x dx between a and b that would give us the area under the curve. Now let's do a second area. Let's assume we knew the average value of f of x on this interval. And I'm just going to make it up. Let's say the average value of f of x was here. I'm shading in a red area here. Now my absolute value I picked for the average may not be exactly right. But assuming that this red line here is the average value, the area of this rectangle, this red rectangle, is the same as this area. And the area of the red, uh, the red rectangle would be the average value of f of x times the width of that rectangle, which is b minus a. So if we solve that for average value of f of x, we would divide by b minus a, and we get our average value formula that we're going to use in our problem that we had above, which is 1 over b minus a times the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. So I just wanted to go through this so you can kind of see where the formula comes from instead of just giving you a formula that you can use. Now for your problems and your homework if you need to you can just memorize that formula and use it but I hope the background helps. So let's go back to our problem. Now in this tutorial once we get into solving we're going to set up the problem uh, you know, using the calculus notation, our definite integral, but we're going to take advantage of the graphing calculator to evaluate the definite integral. If you're taking a test or have a teacher that doesn't allow you to use the graphing calculator, when we get to that step, you would use your integration rules and calculate step by step. And if you need help with that, again, you can go to my other tutorial. So on this particular problem, to find our uh, average value over the two-year period. We need to integrate our function, which is here. Integrate C. And we're going to integrate it with respect to T. And we are going to integrate it for two years, but our function is in months, so our bounds for that two years need to be 0 to 24. 
and again to find the average value of C. Remember from our formula that we just reviewed a minute ago, we have to take 1 over the width here, 1 over B minus A, which is going to be 1 over 24. And if we calculate that, we're going to get our average value. So let's go to our calculator here. To uh, do a definite integral, we need to put our function into uh, f of x. Now I'm going to, just so that we can do one calculation, move this constant inside of our uh, integral. So we have here the fraction 1 over 24 times our integrand, which is 0 0.005 t squared plus 0 0.01 t plus 13.15. And let's just, uh, and since we are integrating between 0 and 24, we need to adjust our window to have a value of x going from 0 to at least 24. Let's just make it 25. And uh, the y values here, I'm not sure what they're going to be. Let's just start out setting y min to be uh, 0. And I don't know, let's just make this 50. Let's see what these costs might be. Let's sketch a graph. Okay, obviously I uh, made my y values way too big. Let's try here. Let's change y max to maybe uh, 10. And let's integrate. So we go second calc. 7, and we want to integrate from 0 to 12, I mean 24. And we get 14.23. Now that graph... confused me for a second because I was expecting it to be the cost curve and I knew the costs were in the teens but I forgot in our definition we included the 1 over 24 in the function so that's why the function value was so low. Uh, we could have integrated our original function and then remembered to multiply or divide that number by 24. So I hope this helps again to find average value of a function. We use our formula that we had down here. 1 over b minus a, that gives us the width of our uh, area of interest. And again, we are then integrating f of x between those same two limits to get the area. And we showed above how that ties into average value. Hope this helps.